So what I am going to talk about today is an upstream approach in the management of diabetes. And what do I mean by upstream approach is that the, you target the most important risk factor for the development of a diabetes, which is likely to be an obesity. And if you target it from day one or if you target it even from the beginning, you can prevent so many things. Cardiovascular disease, even the emergence of diabetes and even the associated comorbidities. So now the focus is going for the early and aggressive, rather the prevention of diabetes and prevention of diabetes-related complications. So my approach will be, so burden of, I think I'll just leave it, yeah. So what is the burden of diabetes? So it's around 60, so this was the data by the uh, Dr. Bhuraskar and Dr. Mohan et al. I think we also published the same in Lancet Diabetes and Technology. The 67% of the people with type 2 in, in diabetes in India have obesity. So it's a huge number. If you take the overweight and obese together, it makes around 87%. So it does mean that so almost 90% of the people either are overweight or obese in patients with uh, or patients with type 2 diabetes. Then you have a seven-fold higher increased risk of all-cause mortality. And then the furthermore concept of a thin fat Indian where the more visceral as well as the subcute fat is present and mean muscle mass is low. So that further predisposes for more beta cell dysfunction and insulin resistance. So now we say that there is a new term which has been recently coined is a sinister synonym. What do I mean by that? The physical factors or the physical environment currently, the social environment currently, and even the personal environment including this, which includes your sleep disorders, inability to be active, stigma and impaired mental health, eventually leads to adiposity. And this adiposity contributes to both insulin resistance and beta cell decomposition, eventually lead to diabetes. And then the vicious circle starts, where the medication-induced weight gain, hypoglycemia, neuropathy, and further going into depression. So the vicious circle starts with adiposity, followed by diabetes and eventually the circle moves and both perpetuates. The adiposity increases with worsening of diabetes. So complications due to increased body weight, I think everyone, there is no need to recapitalize. It's a cardiovascular and non-cardiovascular. And you can see that the non-cardiovascular are too many as opposed to cardiovascular. And now the approach is an upstream approach means to target obesity or now uh, called as a deposity or a deposopathy. And then in a downstream, and you don't wait till the hyperglycemia develops. So you control the glucose or you control even the emergence of hyperglycemia even prior to the onset of diabetes. The importance of upstream approach is such a weight-centric intervention would lead to it disrupt the underlying pathophysiology of type 2 diabetes. It may slow down the disease course. And concomitantly, the card because the pre-diabetes, we say it is called as a ticking clock hypothesis, where the complication starts, where the cardiovascular risk factors uh, and complications starts arising even before the emergence of hyperglycemia. So even if you control at that point of time, the risk for a cardiovascular disease may really go down very well. So you see that after the emergence of a diabetes, the cardiovascular risk remains almost stable. It is a microvascular complications, they become much more, they rise progressively. While in a pre-diabetic phase, hardly there are microvascular complications, but the risk of microvascular complications is at peak. So I think targeting obesity at a time when you are in a, evaluating with the diabetes, that will be very, very important and that will be very, very pivotal to prevent the complications. So this is the data that shows that if you lose weight, and here there is a weight loss, something around 5 kg, and you reduce the risk by 10 kg. So I think losing weight reduces the risk of diabetes. And similarly, the weight loss, if the diabetes is already immersed in, then the weight loss can lead to good diabetes control. And it is both hemoglobin A1C and fasting glucose, they correlate with change in hemoglobin A1C. Then the direct trial, I think, gave a lot of vision into that you can have a remission of the disease. And it was not a 15%, it was a 15 kg weight loss led to reversal of the disease. And the 15 kg of weight loss was associated with loss of one gram of the ectopic fat in the pancreas. 
that was a very crucial that you had such a meager amount of fat in the pancreas that is ectopically increased. So when you lose 15 kg of your body weight, you lose 1 kg, 1 gram of the pancreatic fat. And that led to a reversal of diabetes. It means that ectopic fat could lead to, or remove, elimination of the ectopic fat could lead to improvement in beta cell function and a reversal of the disease. So greater the loss of the uh, weight, you have a greater is the outcome as far as the universal of disease is concerned. So many pharmacotherapies, lifestyle, diet, and even a metabolic surgery, everything is there. I'll be just talking about the semaglutide. We have already experienced the liraglutide in the past. So this is a new molecule orally taken for more comfortable with the patients. So this is the unmet need in a weight loss therapy. That is mainly because of a molecule that can address the need gap. And you can see that this provides some multiple benefits. So that is not only weight, hypoglycemias, your sugar profile, your side effect profile, your cardiovascular benefits, and approved for a variety of patients. So how this, how does the semaglutide it acts on? It acts on from a direct pathway as well as indirect pathway. And this is acting on area of prostema and nucleus tractor solitarius pathway and increasing the satiety. And remember that it is a mainly satiety which is increased. There is no much change in resting energy expenditure. So it is basically a reduced food intake is responsible for a change in a weight. It is not the increased energy, uh, energy expenditure is responsible for the weight loss. So here is the data, the body weight and body composition change in oral semaglutide versus uh, placebo. You lose a very, very modest amount of a lean muscle mass that happens with any weight losing therapy, but mainly the body fat mass is remarkably reduced. If you go further, the data in a different pioneer studies, the how many people, 8 out of 10 could achieve a hemoglobin A1C below 7. More than 50% of the people could have a weight loss of more than 5%. Up to 5 kg weight loss was seen in all pioneer clinical trials and showed a consistent weight loss which was sustained. It's very important that if you continue, then it is sustained. If you discontinue, there is almost 2 to 3 kg weight gain or say around that. So, but still you may remain 3 kg minus. But you for this sustenance, you have to do effort after discontinuation. But if you continue with therapy, the weight loss will be maintained. And then the consistent weight loss regardless of age. So everyone loses the weight at any age. And lastly, the consistent weight loss regardless of background medications. Even someone has been on a biodiesel for earlier, they may still lose weight. And lastly, the 1.5% reduction in all clinical trials, but that is I mean, the baseline hemoglobin A1C was something around 9%. So, ADA 2022 standard of care recommends this class of drug. And now, the, I think the metformin is still there, no doubt. But the metformin has been uh, shadowed down. And I think the more focus has been on ASCVD. And we just had a debate. The more focus on ASCVD and glucose, the more focus I will see on comprehensive control of diabetes. So this is just as a one case. And what I just wanted to stress with this case is that you target obesity as early as possible. Because that is highly prevalent and that is one of the proposing and uh, perpetuating factor for the worsening of hyperglycemia. So this is a gentleman who has got a hemoglobin A1C of 8.1 and who has got a body mass index of around 27, if I see correctly. And then we see that the diagnosis with has been initiation on metformin and lifestyle modification and multifactorial treatment we usually start. Then we try to prevent complications. And here we see that this um, after the lifestyle intervention, current treatment is already on a gene right now also. But the patient concerns are he has got a symptoms of ASCVD, one. And secondly, his father died at the young age, 57 years. And he has also experiencing hypoglycemic result from baby. In such scenario, so like a three years you waited for uh, given the OHA lifestyles plus metformin and sulfonylurea, there was a progressive increase in BMI from 30 to 31. There was a change in the weight around 3 kg. The hemoglobin A1C worsened by 0.2% and urinary albumin treatment ratio increased from less than 30 to 40. So you have, you find a so much of change and you see this journey of glycemic control eventually worsen and <clears throat> 
Later on, the other cardiovascular receptors were targeted and GLP-1 receptor agonist was added and you see that. So after three years, the hemoglobin A1C is below 7. The weight is reduced by, you can see, the 13 kg. So a 13 kg weight loss with that. Blood pressure is controlled, ACR is returned back and uh, EGFR is, yes, again, there is a rise and LDL cholesterol going down. So I think if you are targeting early, this obesity component, which is an important respective for many other comorbidities, I think you can overcome this. Uh, you can overcome the emergence of complications. So, from, we should be very, very aggressive in that. And, yes. So, to summarize, so global and national burden of diabetes is increasing and is complicated by inadequate uh, treatment and emergence of comorbidities. High body weights is an emergent syndrome leading to adverse patient's outcome. An upstream approach, I think that we wanted to focus on that. If you focus on obesity to begin with, I think that should be this. And fortunately, the semoglutide has also been having a beneficial and cardiovascular outcome. So that gives them double advantage in that way. And they are overreaching benefits by not only beyond hemoglobin even C control, and it's a valuable place in upstream approach to thank you. Thank you.